Hi guys, Mr. Pollock Biology here with another revision tutorial. This one is for the new A-level, but it's also on the old A-level as well, and we're looking at studying cells. More specifically, it's going to be cell fractionation, so how we separate off the different organelles um, so we have a nice pure sample for us to study. And we've only got one objective today, and that's basically to describe how this whole process occurs. So we're going to describe how to isolate organelles from a tissue sample or from a sample of cells. So cell fractionation is a two-stage process. The first stage is known as homogenization and basically involves bashing up the cells and breaking open the cell walls and cell membrane to release the organelles. And to do this, we need a piece of scientific equipment called a homogenizer, which is essentially just a sciencey blender. All it's designed to do is bash up, mince up, break open cell walls and cell membranes as well. The second stage is called differential centrifugation. Differential because we can differentiate out or split out different organelles by centrifuging them. And centrifuge, all a centrifuge does is spin stuff and we've got control over how quickly we can spin things out. So let's have a look at those stages in a bit more detail. First we're going to look at homogenization. I'm sorry for the really low quality image that I've used here but Google Images couldn't find me anything with the transparent background that was nicer. So homogenization is designed to release the organelles. We break open the cell membrane or the cell wall, if we're talking about plant cells, um, and in order to protect the organelles, our sample must be a couple of things. We've got to keep it ice cold to stop the enzymes that are designed to digest and recycle cellular components from being active. So it's ice cold to stop the enzyme activity. It's also got to be pH buffered and that's going to prevent further damage to organelles because you know organelles are really really sensitive to changes in pH. And also finally it's got to be isotonic so the solution that we're spinning these things up in has to be at the same water potential as the tissues themselves, the cells themselves. And the reason for this is because you don't want water to move into the cells by osmosis and burst them, this is osmotic lysis, or you don't want water to move out of the cells by osmosis and compromise the integrity of the organelles. So this is all about keeping our organelles as protected as they can be, seeing as we're sticking them through a blender. Sorry, that's a really bad animation. So if we move on, we should look at the second stage, which is differential centrifugation. Here's my centrifuge. Um, but the thing is, before we do anything, uh, we, need to, we need to think about this whole process and why it works. So the whole reason differential centrifugation works is because all of the organelles have different densities, so some are heavier than others. And by spinning at different speeds, that means we can separate out the more dense ones from the less dense ones. So at low speed, we can, uh, we can spin out the very, very dense organelles, and at high speed, we spin out the, uh, the less dense ones. So the less dense the organelle, the faster we must spin our centrifuge in order to separate it out from the rest of the sample. But before we need to spin, we must filter our homogenate, which is the solution that comes out of the, homo the homogenizer. The idea behind this is filtration removes any cellular, cellular debris. So that's fragments of cell membrane or cell wall or anything that's kind of left behind after we've blitzed it with our science blender. Um, and if we didn't filter these components out, our samples of organelles might be impure because they might contain cellular debris that has an equal density to, say, I don't know, the mitochondria or the nuclei. So once we've done that, we're ready to spin our sample. We can stick it into a centrifuge. So here we go, there's my centrifuge, and there is my sample, and this is what's come out of the homogenizer, and we call this the homogenate. So first of all, we're gonna spin this sample at really, really, really low speed. And because it's spinning at low speed, the only stuff that's going to separate out is going to be the really heavy stuff. So what we get is at the bottom of our, our, our test tube, or our Eppendorf tube, whatever, we end up with a pellet of sediment. And this first spin will contain the nuclei. Everything else, all the other organelles that are less dense than the nuclei, will still be suspended in the solution that's above the pellet. And we call this solution the supernatant. So once we've done that, and we've, we have to remove our pellet, and we can spin it again slightly faster. So there we go. We're going to get rid of these. We're going to remove that pellet of nuclei. We can study those if we wish, but we're going to spin this whole thing faster again. 
This next spin will reveal a pellet that has the next most dense organelles. And again, the supernatant will contain everything that isn't this, this, uh, this density. So in most cases, the second spin will reveal the mitochondria or the chloroplasts. Now, I have a feeling that in your exam, they're going to ask you to describe how to separate out either mitochondria or chloroplasts. They'll say for chloroplasts, it'll be a, 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 leaf sam a leaf tissue sample, perhaps, or if it's mitochondria in animal cells, maybe, perhaps they will give you uh, a sample of uh, cheek cells or something. Either way, you've got to be able to describe how it goes. They probably won't ask you to, to describe how to do this any further, but just in case, it's probably worth thinking about which fraction different organelles will spin out in. And we can organize these from most dense, the ones that'll spin out at really low speeds, to the least dense, the ones that require really high speeds. So the most dense is the nuclei, followed by the mitochondria and chloroplasts, followed by the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi, and finally the ones that require a ridiculously high speed to spin out, they're gonna be the ribosomes. So to summarize this whole thing, we can use cell fractionation to isolate samples of individual organelles. Our sample, to be homogenized, must be cold, isotonic, and buffered in solution to prevent any damage to organelles. The sample is then filtered to remove cellular debris that will be of equal density to some of the organelles. Finally, we spin the sample in a centrifuge and our most dense organelles will form sediment pellets at low speed. Less dense organelles will require spinning again at faster speeds. I hope that's been really useful, guys. It's a nice little topic, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be on this year's exam. So good luck, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.